this weekend I was relaxing a little bit, playing with my train. It's one of the hobbies I have. And when I went through the process of uh, doing a layout, I realized a lot of what I was doing could be related to how you create content online. You see, whenever I do a new layout, there's a lot of steps that are involved in creating a layout. And it turns out, I think when you create content online, you can use a lot of the same steps. So I have a piece of software. Whenever I do a layout, I make a plan. You can go online and you can download this piece of software and you can make a layout like I did here. And then this piece of software actually has built into it an inventory. So I looked at the inventory of the track that I laid out to make sure that I had all the pieces required to build this track. So when you create content for your online course, you need to take inventory. Do I have the hardware and software? Uh, do I have to be in a certain place or a certain time of day, have a certain item to make this content? Just in the same way I had to take an inventory of the parts that I had for my train. And my collection of train stuff, which I keep in that piece of software I told you about, I have this one item. It's a bridge. And I like this bridge a lot. And I really wanted to use it in my layout that I made, but it just didn't work. In the same manner, when you're creating online content, don't use anything that you don't need. You might think, I have to make a video. I have to do a podcast. I have to do something whenever I do online uh, content creation. But the truth is, make the content however the content is effective with whatever you have. Don't think you have to do certain things all the time. The next thing you need to do is identify any constraints you might have. For me, I have one big constraint. Actually, it's a small constraint. It's the size of the table that I have to work with. I have to fit the whole track on this table. For teachers, I think there should be one constraint that you always work into your online content, and that is the time that the content lasts. What's the duration of whatever I'm making? Try to limit everything you do to five minutes or less because that's right at the limit of the attention span of most students. When you start to create your online content, keep your plan in front of you. That way you know, ultimately, here's my goal and I know how I'm going to work toward that goal. When you have it finished, test it out. First off, look at it yourself. Then have other people in your department look at it. With a train, it's pretty simple. You put it on the track, see if it goes around without any problems. Uh, I had a problem with this. You see, I created a curve that didn't have a support under it because I didn't have the train pieces to make that support. So I had to improvise. It's called an adjustment. You're going to have to make adjustments to your content. You're going to get to a spot where something just doesn't work the way you thought it was going to work, and you're going to have to deviate from the plan. So be ready for that. I had to make three different adjustments to my track before I could get it to work correctly. Once I made those adjustments, I think everything was ready to go. And it's important that you clean up what you can and you share the best version of your work with your students. I didn't show the Legos on the floor, or I didn't include a picture that had all that wire all over the place. In fact, I tried to use a lot of duct tape and bailing wire to clean things up so that I had the very best version for my students. Hopefully my playing around on a Saturday help you make some kind of connection to how you could create effective online content.